Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to look at the Salesforce Certified Administrator Exam Guide and we're going to use that to create a spreadsheet which is going to allow us to really focus on where we need to focus. It's going to give us everything we need to know to prepare for the admin exam. So what we're going to do now is just have a look through this Certified Administrator Exam Guide and we're just going to highlight a couple of key bits of information here. So I'm sure you've already read this but what we're going to do is just scroll straight down to about the exam and this is the information that I'm interested in because it tells me the number of questions we have which there's going to be 60 questions now I know there's going to be five that are non-scored and I'm not too bothered about them because all I'm bothered about is the 60 ones that we're going to be scored on we know we've got 105 minutes to sit the exam and we've know we've got a passing score of 65 percent so we need to get 65 percent of those 60 questions correct so what we're going to do is start our spreadsheet off with that information. So we're just going to head in here. We're just going to put the exam, which is going to be the Salesforce Administrator exam. And then we're going to create a little section here called key information. So this is the key information about the exam. And as I've said, we need to know the number of questions. So we're going to have the number of questions. We need to know the passing percentage. And importantly, what it doesn't tell us in that exam guide, but what I think is important as well, is the passing number. So we need to know what the passing number is as well. So how many questions we need to get correct. So as we know, there's 60 questions. And as we also know, it's 65% passing rate. So to work out the number of questions we need to get correct, we just need to hit the sum function. We need to times the number of questions by the percentage which then tells us that we need to get 39 questions correct. So in order to pass the admin exam, we need to get 39 out of 60 correct. So that gives us a nice little baseline to work from straight away. Now, let's head back to the exam guide. And the area I want to focus on here is this exam outline. And again, this is really important because just like how we've worked out, you know, how many questions we need to get correct to pass the exam, we can roughly estimate how many questions we can expect for each section because we have the waiting. So to do that, what we need to do is we need to head back to our exam guide spreadsheet and we're just going to create a little table for this. So we're going to put in here section because that's the section we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the waiting. We're then going to work out the number of questions on that. We're going to also track, so this is going to be for later on, but we need to track what our mock score is on it. And another key thing I found really important is our confidence on it. I, I just feel that we need to know how confident we are for each section. So what we're going to do is we're just going to transpose this information. So rather than watching me sit here and, and type it for a couple of minutes, I've already created it and I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. There we are, and I'm just going to drag this a little bit wider so it can hold all that information that we need. Perfect. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make this a bit easier to read. So the easiest way I do that is I just use alternating colours and I'll just pick gold because I like that colour. So the next thing we want to do is actually work out the number of questions that we're going to get per section. And the easiest way to do that is to use the same formula we've used before, which is just looking at the number of questions and then times in them by the percentage. And we can see that if we do that, that there's going to be 12 questions roughly for the configuration and setup section. Now we need to work that out for the rest. And a little trick for you to do this, rather than keep clicking and moving it across, is if you come to your formula and you put the dollar sign just before the letter and the dollar sign just after the cell value as well, so the, the row and the column, what this is gonna do is fix that value so that value isn't going to change. So when I just copy that down like that, it's going to work everything out. So it's just keeping that figure static. Now, as you can see, this gives us a really good breakdown of what we can expect. And this is going to really influence how you study. So when you're looking at studying, you should automatically realize that configuration and setup is far more important than productivity and collaboration. Same as object manager and lightning app builder is more important than productivity and collaboration. And you can see that data analytics and workflows, they're very similar. Sales and marketing and services support applications are very similar as well. So this is gonna give you a really good idea um, in terms of what to expect in terms of number of questions. So from that, 
You would then want to record your mock scores for any kind of mocks that you take on that. So that could be through Focus on Force, for example, because they have sectional mock exams. So you could record that in there. And then you could put your confidence in there as well. Now, again, there's a couple of things that I tend to do here just to make things easier for me to reference. So first, I'm just going to change this field into a percentage field. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here. In fact, the best way to do it, I mean, if you go to more selections and you go to conditional formatting, you can then start setting depending on what the value is, just really, you know, the color behind it. So the way I always tend to work is anything that is 70% or above is green. Anything that is 40% or low is red. So they're the areas for concern. So the way which we'll do that is we'll put, it has to be greater than or equal to. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to put 75% because that's 10% above the passing mark, which seems like a pretty good idea. So we'll put that one in there. We're then gonna change it to red and we're gonna put less than or equal to 40%. So we'll have that. And then the next one we're gonna put in is we're gonna put where it's greater than, in fact, it's where it's between 40% and 75% and that one can be amber. So when we do that, what it means is if we're recording our mock scores, we can see well 90% was good, 80% was good, 20% not brilliant, 40% not brilliant, 60 about average, 50 about average, and it just gives us again that, that little kind of idea of to where we are. Then again, I do something similar for the confidence level. And the way that I do this is I do it through data validation as well. So I'll choose from a list of items and I'll have low, medium, high. And again, very simple pick list. So that's pretty much exactly the same as what a pick list would work as in Salesforce. And again, I'm just gonna color that as well. So I'll go to conditional formatting. We're just looking at this value here. And we're gonna say that if the text is exactly high, then it's going to be green. If the text is low, then it's going to be red. And then if the text is medium, then it is going to be amber or orange per se. So you'll notice that again, when you're changing these, these are going to be correct as well. So it's just gonna give you that quick reference as to really how you're getting on on everything. And the way that I would do this as well is I would also have a look at creating a total line here. So that's just gonna make sure that, you know, you're fully confident in everything that's being calculated. So you just do the sum of that, which you know it's going to be 100%, then we'll just do this again as well. So that should add up to 60. And then what we'll do as well is put that in for the scores there. Oh, in fact, that one isn't quite right. So the way to do that is going to be average. So we'll just put average of those scores in. And then that just gives you kind of that as well. Do you know what I mean? It's just giving you a bit of an idea. And the way I would, again, look at doing this is just bold and underline that score go into data valid, uh, sorry, into conditional formatting, and I'd use the exact same kind of thing as well. So, you know, if it's greater than or equal that to 75%, then you're green because you're good. If it's less than, we'll put 55% for this one, um, just because it's going to be, you know, it needs to be higher than that before you sit your exam. And then what we'll have is if it's between 55% and 75%, then it's going to be amber. So that just gives you a bit of an overview of, of how you can really track how you're getting on with it. Now, what I would also do as well here is I would create another really important section called mock exams. And in your mock exams, you are going to want to look at really what the exam was. So you can have the exam here. You'll have a look at what the date is. You want to look at what your result is. And then the really important bit is, is I call them concepts of concern. And concepts of concern are just areas you know that you're weak in. These are the bits that, again, you need to spend your time refreshing and just really getting to know a little bit better. So an example of that would be, is say you sit the, the focus on force full mark one. Full mark one. And you sit it on, we'll say the 4th of February. So we sat it yesterday. And what we actually got out of that, and again, I'm just going to change these to percentages is we'll say out of that, we actually sat and we got 60%. So it's not ideal. And what areas were we struggling on? We'll say, well, we saw a lot of questions around profiles and permission sets that we struggled on. There was also questions um, about report types. 
And perhaps there was also a question about validation rules in there that we wasn't quite sure of. Well, what this will do now is actually give us um, a bit of a shortlist to work towards. So as you're going through your mocks, you can start looking at these and knowing what areas you need to focus on. So we've got that as the overview. So I'm just going to rename this as overview because that's the bit we're looking at. And now what we're going to do is dive into a section by section breakdown. So we're just going to type this as section breakdown. And again, I'm just going to change my font and I'm just going to change the size of it just because I don't like Arial. Um, so we've moved it to there. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to look at each section and objective and we're going to look at the key concepts in it. So we're going to put in here section or objective. I'll just make that bold and underlined. And then we're just going to type out what section we're looking at. So we're going to be looking at configuration and setup. So we're just looking at configuration setup. I'm just going to paste that in there. And again, I'm going to definitely drag this out because the objectives are quite long winded. So we need to make sure they're in there. The next bit that I want to have a look at is going to be the key concepts. So we're going to look at key concepts and I'll help you break these down because these key concepts are again, really, really important. This is what's going to give you your almost, I don't like using the word cheat sheet, but essentially it is pretty much a cheat sheet. And then we can crack in here with confidence as well. So what we'll do is we'll look at the first one and um, I'm not going to walk you through every single one. I mean, I'm going to provide a link where you can download this uh, spreadsheet once I get it up onto my website. But this is, again, just to highlight it to you. And then what we'll do is we'll look at describe the information found in company settings. And you've got company settings, fiscal year, business hours, currency management, default settings, etc. So we go to our section here. We're going to type that in now again really important is we need to wrap the text because it is going to uh to be well quite overflowing otherwise so we know looking at this is that company settings so we've got company settings that is going to be our key concept we can then look at breaking it down in terms of you know fiscal year we can look at business hours currency etc but we know that if we go into it's a setup and we type in company settings, we know this through experience, by the way, that we'll open up Trailhead. Uh, sorry, we'll open up our org. We'll go to setup and in the quick find section on the left, which will be like here, we'll just type company settings and that will give us all of our company settings to work to. Now, we can do this for each and every single one. So, you know, we'll again just copy this one across and we'll just paste that in and then this one is talking about distinguish and understand the administration of declarative configuration of the user interface for example ui settings app menu list views global actions lightning app builder so we know that is everything to do with user interface and again we can get more granular in there by looking at app menu we can look at list views global actions um, and of course the lightning app builder in there as well but as you can see, what this is doing is it's actually starting to give us the information we need to look at it. And when you start looking at some of the more detailed ones, you'll actually see, you know, you can break it down even more. I mean, there are some which are a little bit obscure, you know, where it says, given a scenario, dis demonstrate the proper setup and maintenance of users. But again, if you're working through Trailhead, um, like you should be doing uh, alongside this as well, then you'll know that when it's talking about proper setup and maintenance of users. We're talking about, well, user creation, because we need to look at setting them up. We're talking about licenses, because they're involved in that. And then we're also looking at user maintenance. So when you look at user maintenance as well, what you'll look at is the potential of freezing users and also deactivating users as well. So all of these, you're going to be picking up as you're going along tra along through Trailhead um, and through any kind of resource material that you're looking at. Now, as you can see, there's quite a few objectives. So in true Blue Peter fashion, um, here's one that I made earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy across everything that I made previously. So here it is. It's all come across. And what I'm doing now is I'm just going and highlighting each section there because that's the beginning of it perfect and then what you can see now is that we actually have 
we actually have a curriculum. We've basically got our own little agenda of what we need to study in order to pass the exam. So it comes in really useful, this. And again, with the confidence bit, this is just, it's just how I kind of operate in my head. I like to know kind of where I think I'm, what standpoint I'm at. And I'll just put in here, low, medium, high. And just put a comma in there, otherwise it won't see it. So we'll put that as low, medium, high. And then I'm just gonna drag all that down as well to there. And then again, as I always do, you've probably seen I'm quite a visual kind of person is what I want to do is I want to conditional format that as well. So again, if the text is exactly high, I want that as green. If it's low, then I want that as red. And then if it's medium, I want that as amber slash orange, yellow, whatever color you want to call it. And we'll click that as done. Now, what this will mean is just when I'm looking through certain sections, I might see that, oh, I've got medium confidence on there. I'm you know, confident about the company settings, about the user interface, about user creation, but I'm not all there with the, uh, with the security. So I can put my confidence as low there and I could put, well, you know, that kind of stuff around security controls. Maybe I'm only a medium there and book profiles and permissions. I know, I know that inside out. So again, this just means that when you're looking at your exam and you're looking at breaking down how you're going to study and what you're going to uh, focus on, you're able to do it really quickly. You're able just to open up a spreadsheet and not waste your time going through a load of notes trying to figure out well, where was I, what am I weak on, etc., etc. You can open up your spreadsheet, you can look at your overview and you can go, right, well, these are the mock scores I'm getting. And again, you might want to do this down here, you know, like how we've conditional highlighted it, which to be honest with you, I would because like I said, I'm a visual person um, and you've got that. Now, the other thing that I would suggest doing as well is you probably know what I'm going to type here, but it's concepts of concern. And in the concepts of concern section, you've guessed it, this is where we're just going to highlight anything that we're struggling with. So, for example, if we're looking at users creation, we might think, you know, well, we struggle to understand why we would freeze a user versus deactivating a user. And if we just type it in there, we've got a list, we've got it sat there waiting for us. And we can do this as we're going throughout all of our studies. So I really hope this video has been useful for you because this helped me tremendously. And I haven't just used this for the admin exam. I've used this for the admin, the app builder, sales cloud, service cloud, community cloud, or experience cloud as it's called now. I also used it for CPQ, field service, um, and for the user designer, the UX designer certification as well. So it just gives you a bit more structure to work towards. And um, if you found it useful, please let me know. Just type it, you know, in the comments below. If you want to share it with anyone, let me know as well. And then what I'll do is, um, like I said, I'm going to extrapolate this and put this. I'll host it on my website so it's easy to download. And then you can just download it and you can take it from there if you don't fancy rebuilding it yourself. But thank you very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I wish you all the best with your studies for your Salesforce admin exam.